Hello everybody, welcome back to That Fiction Life. We all know by now that the Fault of the Air series by Holly Black is perfection. And today, the latest book in the series, How the King of Elfame Learned to Hate Stories, is published. Now this video is going to be a reading vlog because I really want to go through my thoughts live. I did this for The Queen of Nothing, which is the final book in the original trilogy, and it was genuinely a documentation of my downfall if you watch that video. <laughs> I'm going to keep this video spoiler free, definitely the whole beginning. I will of course give you plenty of warning if I am to dive into spoilers. I am assisting on the marketing campaign for this book. It is a dream come true. Being a hockey books ambassador has been the greatest experience so far. So yes, that's why I have the book early. It has been in my house for about a week already, but I was reading These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. It is fantastic but I needed to get that review out first and so I had to just resist. All I did was just do a flick through like this so far. This is illustrated by Ravina Kai and she is phenomenal. This cover is so beautiful. I cannot wait to recreate this because I'm planning a whole massive book look for it. I'm going to be doing the book look on another day but I will insert it here at some point so you can see my whole process. Okay, I have not taken the dust jacket off yet, so. This is a hard cover, but it's one of those hard covers that's really heavy because of course this isn't fully illustrated book, which means it has colored pages. And so you can't really just use the normal book paper as the quality wouldn't be as high. We have the map of Elfame here. I so want to move there. Oh, Locks Estate. Yeah, that should burn down. Oh, I have the coolest thing to show you, by the way. So this is what it looks like. I bought some wire and I twisted it into this shape, super glued some beads to the side. So I would just like to say that I'm an official member of Elfame now. I will not be taking any questions at this time. Should we have a reading of the first page, which is a little bit of a prologue? A prince of fairy, nourished on cat milk and contempt, born into a family overburdened with heirs, with a nasty little prophecy hanging over his head. I remember how much I died when we learned in The Queen of Nothing that he was brought up by a cat, Loki, because his mother didn't want him, so this stray cat in their house would feed him. <laughs> And then the book starts and we have, oh, what is this beauty? The King of Elfame visits the mortal world is story number one. So I believe this is a novella bind up. I didn't know that initially. I thought it was going to be a full on book. Do we all remember when Cardin visited Vivi in The Queen of Nothing because he went to see where Jude was and when he was learning about all the human things that exist and how he traveled there, it was so funny. It has been some time since I read Queen of Nothing, so I wish this book had timestamps. Oh, okay, so we know, okay, this story is set after Queen of Nothing. He cuts his gaze toward his unpredictable mortal high queen. They are goals. 
Okay, this I've read two pages and I'm not alive anymore. They are two people who ought to have by all rights remained enemies forever. So I've just read the first story and I love seeing how Cardin sees Jude because he seems very in awe of her and it was almost as though he can't imagine that she was willing to love him after all that he has done and even he himself says having only recently stopped playing the villain and what I find fascinating about the wording here is that he stopped playing the villain you know not being the villain he fully admits here that he was putting on an act and that's something I really appreciate about his character because he does have this very steel-like exterior. He does claim that he has no emotions about anything and he's so carefree but it's all just an act. Another favourite thing of mine is how Jude hasn't changed at all. She's still very much consumed with power as she was in the original trilogy and I love this line here, all queens become greedy. The way Holly Black writes is unlike anything any other author can do, in my opinion. She writes these very morally ambiguous characters very well, and they're not shy about wanting the power that they have. I love how Jude and Cardin still appear to not fully understand their relationship and kind of both be very confused as to how they have ended up together. been a few hours I've made a coffee I'm getting back into reading we have made it to page 50 I was not expecting the stories to be so short they're genuinely a few pages each so they're not really stories I would say that they're a collection of scenes so despite the stories being very short I'm gaining so much knowledge about Cardin and his inner thoughts are very different to what I thought originally especially reading the main series because you're only exposed to what Jude is thinking and her interpretation of what his actions mean. So in story three we have Belkin making an appearance and he says to Cardin, hear this out, I brought you here because you are one of the few people who see Dane for what he is and are therefore valuable to me. I think we've all been curious for the last three, four years as to why Belkin was the one to take Cardin in. And now we're beginning to understand a little bit that he firstly wanted to use him against Dane, and secondly, he had to give Cardin a makeover. So we knew that Cardin didn't have the greatest upbringing. However, seeing that he was actually a mess, didn't care about anything, he wore the most scruffiest of clothes, and he didn't enjoy any of the court activities that were going on. In The Cruel Prince, we're introduced to a very flamboyant and enigmatic prince. I also encountered what I think is my favourite illustration so far, and that is Queen Olaf and Nicasia entering the Elfame court for the first time. We of course know that Nicasia lives in Elfame, and she to me is one of the most fascinating characters in this world because she's been sent to the Feylands in order to wed one of the princes to become queen of the sea and land. The queen sending her there definitely had an effect on her because Cardin even said so himself. She has had bloodlust sort of become part of her DNA and it's a huge part of her upbringing. And this is my favourite part about this series because all of these characters are so damaged. There's a reason as to why each of them behave the way they do. And you may judge Nikasi, I mean, she does some crazy shit in The Cruel Prince. But then when you begin to understand that she's kind of a tool to her mother. Nicasia's and Cardin's situations are different to how Valerian and Locke behaved. Like I'm not saying that a bad childhood excuses everything that they have done, but I think it gives their characters a lot of layers. They both developed over the series. Okay, so story four I think is the most surprising one so far, and that one is the Prince of Elfame gets a moth drunk. Cardin? saved a servant from Belkin and yes he didn't necessarily do it from the goodness of his own heart but arguably he did because yes he keeps saying to this woman I don't want to see you anymore that's why I'm getting rid of you but you get this sense that he doesn't believe what he's saying now if we think back to the parallel where Jude tried to save one of Belkin's servants but she ended up 
jumping off a cliff. It was the most traumatic scene <laughs> to be reading in that book. The cartoon did the same thing. a fairy cocktail from my recipe that I created. In the original recipe I also put blue food colouring but that is just for the aesthetic and I didn't want to bother with that. Just for my reading drink but it tastes so good. We're on page 139 and Cardin is watching Jude sleep. I'm loving this whole section because they're spending the night at Vivi's house. Marriage means sharing each other's interests and since his wife's run towards strategy and murder, he's used to her throwing herself at absolutely everything. So now that I'm nearly finished with this, I'm definitely noticing that this is more of an expansion on the Elfame world. And it definitely, it doesn't even feel like a novella bind up because the stories are so short. It sort of fills in the gaps of what we may not have known. For example, something from earlier in the book, which I haven't talked about yet, is the chapter where he is watching Jude and then begins to almost chant her name. When we first see that letter in The Cruel Prince that Jude steals from Falcon's house and it just says Jude, 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 all over the page, we were just thinking, what in the actual hell is this? Because we didn't know that Cardin was thinking about her back then. And here it sort of explains how that began. Now the scene we have to talk about is the river scene because I can't be the only one that was wondering how that really came to be because on the face of it, it looks like a petty act about them trying to bully Taryn and Jude once again. Now we know it's because Locke was fooling around with Taryn and therefore rejected Nicasio, who is jealous. But the whole timeline of this is so interesting. Jude and Locke do not get together until after that party, which means that at the river scene, he is already secretly seeing Taryn. Now Taryn has, to excuse me, oh, someone's just come to join me, hello. So Taryn has told Jude there is someone in her life and that of course is Locke, who then two times them both by dating both of the twins it's a whole thing but Nicasia in this instance wasn't mad about Locke being with Jude but about Taryn it was kind of strange to see it be talked about so early on in the Cruel Prince timeline I am crying at them watching Knives Out at Vivi's house because one of my favourite things is seeing Cardin trying to adapt to everyday life. The section about him reading Alice in Wonderland and kind of trying to see how the mortals may not be as boring as everyone thought they were. I am finished with the book. So it seems that the storytelling throughout the book was very significant as we had a little bit of a fight scene and arguably quite a good ending to a regular book where you would have the plot leading up to the big fight at the end, which I thought was clever because this is a bind up of novellas. You're not really expecting a showdown right at the end and for the story to feel whole and not just trickles off with another tiny random scene. Holly's writing is so beautiful. Listen to this. Everyone finds different lessons and stories, I suppose, but here's one. Having a heart is terrible, but you need one anyway. Stories can justify anything. It doesn't matter if the boy with the heart of stone is a hero or a villain. It doesn't matter if he got what he deserved or if he didn't. And then Jude finds him after Aslog tries to kill him. I cackled when he said, henceforth, I think we should consider our roles as monarchs as largely decorative. <laughs> He really doesn't want to be hiking, does he? So I love the final line, so long as you're begging. Oh, this conversation. Oh, but you didn't hear the story I told. A shame. It featured a handsome boy with a heart of stone and a natural aptitude for villainy. So I did quite enjoy this last chapter as the scenes with Jude and Cardin are the best. However, there was not enough of them in this book. I know that this book is called The King of Elfame. It was supposed to learn more about Cardin, but I feel as though it's definitely lacking in the Jude 
content because she is such a huge reason as to why he is the way he is now. And showing us those scenes would have been great for their development. And I also wanted to know more about their relationship now because we know at the end of Queen of Nothing, they kind of had this vision for how they were going to lead their people and I don't feel like we learned enough about that. This definitely felt like a filler book for this world and that's okay because it's a novella, it's not another instalment with a full-on plotline but I think I'd expected the stories to be longer. There were not really stories, there were scenes. While I loved learning the extra information about Cardin, they felt a little bit incomplete, I wanted them to keep going. But the title now makes perfect sense because of the repetition of these stories that he's being told and how he came to despise what they represent. He's definitely one of those characters that has a tough exterior that they really try to uphold when they're in mass gatherings. But as soon as they have downtime, it kind of all comes crashing down. And that's definitely the sort of person that I am. So. While Jude, to me, is very kind of out there and she will go and fight, Cardin conversely keeps it all inside and that is what I do. And I think a lot of people deal like that. They don't want to let anyone know that you have any kind of weakness. You kind of laugh everything off or you make a sarcastic comment, but you're dying inside. And that is definitely relatable. I definitely had an enjoyable time reading this book because I could sit down and you could hammer this out in one sitting and read these little snippets of living in elf fame. And that is not something that we were able to see in the original trilogy. Harden actually grew up there from age zero. It was great to see his family dynamics through this book. I am so sad that we didn't see Dane in here because we know that Cardin is aware, like Belkin, as to what sort of a person Dane actually is and he's been tricking everyone for all of their lives and he's the reason why a lot of people hated Cardin because we already learnt this in Queen of Nothing but it was reiterated here. They thought that Cardin was responsible for this full-on murder but it was actually Dane's arrow that did it and he blamed it on Prince Cardin. And so I wish that there was a scene in here between Cardin and Dane as I think that is a really underrated relationship from this series. So those are my thoughts on The King of Elfame by Holly Black. I'm so happy this book is finally out. The illustrations were so beautiful and definitely the highlight of this book. I really felt immersed in this world. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave me your thoughts below and give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye!